we saw Jesus feeding the people because they were like sheep without a word, shepherd. And then the Lord performed miracles, fed them, and after eating, we find those of them we had two words, fish. And then the people collected, the disciples collected extra. Extra how many? Twelve word baskets. That was a miracle by Jesus. Now, and sorry, can you pick up that text, that chapter for me? He says, immediately, everyone say immediately. Immediately, immediately Jesus commanded his disciples to be like, in the text of scripture, the Greek word that is used says, he forced them into the boat to go cross over to the other side of the lake. And then he also quickly dismissed the people who had gathered and who had fed. So the question is, the, the, yeah, see, verse 45 of that chapter says, immediately he made his disciples get into the world, boat and go ahead of him to the other side. Immediately. That thing is a language of force. A language of hurry, a language of haste. He was in a haste to distract them. Why? Why would Jesus be in a haste to distract them? Why would he not allow them to stay? Something problem that. Something problem that. Now, the disciples of Jesus, even with the miracle that he had performed, they have not even understood how to see who Jesus really is. Forced them into the boat to cross. There are some reasons for that. I like us to look at John's Gospel, chapter 6. John's Gospel, chapter 6. Why Jesus decided to hurriedly send his disciples away, send the people away, and then himself. John's Gospel, chapter 6. Let's take it from verse 14 to 15. John's Gospel chapter 6. Now, it says, On the second day, they march around the city. I said John, not Joshua. John's Gospel chapter 6. Praise the Lord. John's Gospel chapter 6. It says, When the people saw the signs they had done, they said, this really is the prophet who was to come into the world. That is confession. They were not confessing. And then they went for that. Therefore, when Jesus knew that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. Praise God. Praise God. Let me see the next verse. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. Darkness had already set in, but Jesus had not yet come to them. Now, Jesus sent his disciples away immediately because the people wanted to come and take him and make him what? Can I hear you? And King. King. By what? Force. By what? Force. Why? He had been doing miracles. They have seen the kind of miracles that they have never seen before. Healing the cripple, making the blind see, feeding thousands of persons. And they said, this is the prophet Is a prophet, is a man of God. You run after them. So in this case, they wanted to make Jesus a king by force. A king, not a king. In the thinking of Jesus and in the thought of God, they wanted to make Jesus a king like the Roman rulers and governors that he would help them to fight 
the Roman government, which was contrary to the mission of Jesus, the government that Jesus was going to inaugurate and the kingdom that Jesus was going to establish was a kingdom that was going to be established based on theocracy. And what do I mean by that? Government of God. Ruled by God. The government of God that will bring about freedom. Not like the one that will help them fight the Roman government. And that was when Jesus withdrew from them into the wilderness. And as he was going into the wilderness, because Jesus had been teaching and teaching, if you remember from verse 30 of Mark's Gospel, it says that Jesus had taken his disciples to go and rest. So that they could now tell him in that secluded place what they did when they sent them on missionary journey. But the people spotted them out and did what? And they came. So Jesus did not rest again because he said, as soon as they slept ashore, they saw the people like sheep without their walls. Can I hear you? Sometimes when I want you to talk, try and do what? Talk. Eh? It's a confession. It's a kind of confession. When you speak the word of God, it has a pass on you. Now, Jesus wanted to rest, but they did not allow him to rest. Now, he had to walk and walk again and walk again. In order to perform miracles, it's not easy. I hope you know. Power goes out of you. You remember the case of the woman with the issue of God. As soon as it happened, Jesus said, Who touched me? Because power had gone out of war. He. So, Jesus needed rest. But that was the start. Now again, they want to take him by force, according to John, and take him king, so that he can be performing miracles for them. But that was not what the Lord came to do. And so he had to send his disciples away. And then, when he sent his disciples away, he went to pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Some of you, when you go out and come back, you Sometimes when you go out and come back, when you come back, you are tired. Two of us. And when you finish eating, you bath. How about that? Man? What is the next thing? You sleep. Eh? But Jesus is telling us today, even when we are tired, we should still do what? Pray. We should still do what? Pray. Jesus sent them away so that he can be fooled himself. Because the walk, 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 miracle, miracle Jesus was performing had deprived him worship of his father. And then secondly, Jesus sent his disciples away. Because the disciples also were beginning to be excited by the miracles that we are seeing. Hey, bread, multiply, five loaves of bread into one, thousands of bread. Who is this man? The disciples of Jesus were getting excited by that. And so, because when you are excited, when you are excited emotionally, you make wrong choices and wrong decisions. The disciples of Jesus, you will remember, in some part of the city, said to him, and they came to him and said, How will you restore the kingdom to Israel? And the Lord said, That is not your business. And then another one said, Shall we, uh, that's the, is it James and John, came to him and said, When you establish the kingdom, will you make me and my brother to sit one at your right and the other at your right? Can you get it now? And so, they were thinking, their thinking was wrong. Because they were buying over the new, they were like, So the Lord needed to dismiss them, send them to go across. But look at this. When they were going across, the Lord knew what they were going to do on experience. The Lord knew that the way was wrong. Okay, there's that song we used to say. It's not an easy road. We are traveling to that road. There are many thoughts of words on the way. 
It's not an easy road. So when the Lord was sending them, the son he was aware was going to meet them on the road. He stayed off. But even though he stayed off, the Lord was with them. His eyes and his spirit level was with them. His compassion was with them. And he knew he was going to meet them to support them so that they do not do what go astray. That was part of the reason the Lord sent it away. So that through the training, because the Lord was training them for the mission. And so through that training, through the storms and the difficulties, the tumbling, the fall and the rise, they will be strengthened and they will become stronger to pull through the experiences that they were going to experience and encounter. And that is why scriptures will endeavor us. And I guess, our Lord will endeavor upon us and they will say that we must realize that in the world we will not have words. Peace. I have told you that in the world you will not have words. Peace. But then he said, Know you this, that I have conquered the world. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because when we begin to die with the end, with the excitement of the world, we, are, we lose our focus. We are carried away. And that's why the Lord then will warn us in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Let me see that text of the 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse from verse 17 to 18. Why the Lord had to serve the way? Because he needed them to be separated so that their eyes did not be corrupted. says the Lord, do not touch any unclean thing, and I will welcome you. I will be a father to you. Therefore, dear friends, since we have such promises, we should wash ourselves clean from every impurity of the flesh and spirit, making our bodies Making our sanctification complete in the fear of God. That was the demand. That was into your hearts. We have brought no one, corrupt no one, defrauded no one. Sorry, not that. You're giving me Second Corinthians chapter 6. Sorry, chapter 7. I said Second Corinthians chapter 6. That's chapter 7. I said you've gone over to chapter 7. But the Lord eventually had to separate his disciples from these other people so that they are not corrupted by their unnecessary excitement. And so the Lord needed them to be separated. And when they ask, when the Lord separates them, meaning that they are accepting him, that acceptance of the Lord will give them to say empowerment. He will give them what? Empowerment. And I'd like us to look at John's Gospel chapter 1, verse 12. John's Gospel chapter 1, verse 12. John's Gospel, John's Gospel chapter 1, verse 12. Now, when the Lord came on board, when he became flesh and dwelt among his people, they did not accept him. They did not believe in him. And then the, the word of God tells us, but for those, but for all who did receive him, he gave them the right to be children of what? Can I hear you, church? To be the children of what? God. To those who believe in his name. This is one of the reasons why the Lord had to separate them. Because when you accept Him, then you, you will give you power and authority. Who we are born, not of, of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will.
way of man for the world's cause. And so that was why there was a need for that separation. And then when the Lord has separated them, He Himself went back to the Father to draw strength and energy, deliverance, renewal, worship from God so that He would come out stronger to be able to continue His ministry. You will remember that it was when God in Genesis chapter 22 commanded Abraham to go to the mountains because the scripture says that the Lord left them and he went to the walls. He went to the walls. Mountains. What is mountain all about? Mountain is a sacred place. Mountain is a place of encounter. It is a place of experience of God. Then on the mountain, Abraham encountered God. Here he went to offer his son, Isaac, the only child. And the Lord encountered him there and said, Do not offer God. Or rather, he gave him blessings. On the mountain, the Lord made the prophet Elijah. And he consoled him, gave him power. He energized him, re empowered him. And then he sent him back to the community to go and make declaration. And when he made the declaration, the Lord confirmed those declarations with his words. And when it was confirmed, you see Abraham, you see Elijah, victory of our war, victory. That's why Jesus had to go to the mountain to receive more power, to enjoy the presence of his father. And that enjoyment of the presence of the father will then re-energize the Lord to plunge into the ministry. My dear friends, there are times we need to go to God in order that we might be re-energized. Sometimes we are carried away by things around us, flashy things such that we forget the place of reunion, the place of worship, the place of adoration. Moses' encounter with God was on the mountain top when he was gathering for the sheep. It went up off, off the mountain. Then, the man Sinai, he encountered God. Then, he was given a mandate, a mandate of liberation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I pray that the Lord will give you a mandate of liberation in the name of Jesus. As he gave to Moses, as he gave to Abraham, and also as he gave Jesus, that mantle of liberation that through your encounter with him in your own area of mountain that he will give you that empowerment that will bring about liberation in the name of Jesus. And so when the Lord went there, he drew power and strength. Now, in that particular experience, he was aware of what was happening to the disciples. I want everybody to sing this song. Jesus is passing this way.